Hello, and welcome to another Vizarte video tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn about audio debugging in Vizartist through the use of the debug audio display. This will also serve somewhat as a mini refresher course in the audio features and some of the audio setup options in the Viz engine. So, without further ado, let us begin. To start things off, we're going to need some audio in our scene. So I'm just going to add a live video input here. Good. Done. This live input is a test signal accompanied with embedded audio. The actual audio consists of several sine waves with each channel containing a different frequency. You don't hear it because for the purposes of this video, I have turned off the Windows Audio within the Viz Engine configuration file. But here's how we can turn the Windows Audio back on. We go to Configuration and Audio Settings, and then under the Various tab we see the field Driver Mode, which is set to None. We will change that to Direct Sound. Okay, we will Save and then Reboot. And this is what it sounds like. We've rebooted again, and this time the window sound is turned off. We will now dive in and take a look at the debug audio display. This is actually a set of overlay graphics which visually displays in real time the state of the audio engine. It is accessible through the console command interface. For this tutorial, I'll just be typing the commands in real time into the console which I'll place here on the screen. I could do this from a script or directly from the viz send utility. Now I will type in the command send and then in capital letters audio star debug space set space 7 and nothing happens. That's because there's one additional thing we have to do. We have to turn on the performance monitor. And to do that, we have to go down here and click on the P button. OK, here we have the debug audio display. We can see an array of 16 bars, each bar representing one audio channel. The channel numbering begins in the lower left with channel 0, and to the right of that is channel 1. That represents the first stereo pair. Above that would be channel 2 and channel 3, and so on. In the upper eight channels, for right now, there is no audio data. Uh, we also see a white rectangle in each bar, and that corresponds to the average audio volume. We also see various uh, statistics and performance meters uh, at the bottom. Now, when I turned on the audio debugging, I used a value of 7. That actually is the sum of three different flags, 1, 2, and 4. If I had just used 1, I would see only the statistics. If I use 2, I will only see the volume display. And if I use 4, I will only see the waveform. Now I can sum these and permute these in any ways I want. If I use 6, I will see the volume and the waveform. But again, if I use 7, I will see all three. OK, so how about if we set the audio volume to 0? We'll type send, main scene, star video, star video in, star one, star audio volume. And set zero. OK, now we see all the volumes drop. Now we'll set it back to, say, 20%. And we'll also query, so we do audio volume get. And we see it's at 20% there. OK, now we'll set it back to 100%. I'm now going to talk a little bit about channel volume. It is possible to independently set the audio volume of channels within an audio track.
And we'll use the term audio track to refer to any discrete audio source. This could be a live input, a video clip, an audio clip, or a stream. It could also be audio sent directly from a plugin. The channel volume is expressed as a percent just like the track's audio volume. You can derive the net audio volume of a given channel by multiplying the channel volume by the audio volume for the track it belongs to. Thus, the two parameters are independent of each other. You can even think of the audio volume parameter as a master volume setting for that track, but only for a given track. Okay, so let's use this channel volume command. It's similar to the audio volume command, except there's an extra parameter, that for channel. So let's set channel 3's audio to 20%. So we do the same command almost as before, and we will set channel 3 audio to 20. And now we see channel 3's audio is dropping. Let's say, let's set channel 5 to 0. And we see that goes down to 0. And we'll set channel 8 up to, oh, let's go crazy, 200. One detail to be aware of is that the numbering of the channels varies between the debug display and the command interface. The command interface uses the numbering 1 through 16 to address the channels, whereas the display numbers them 0 to 15. So just bear that in mind. We will now look at a test case using Dolby E. Dolby E is a codec that compresses eight channels of embedded SDI audio into two channels. Here we've added a second live input. There is a Dolby E signal carried in the first stereo pair. Let's mute the audio from live input 1. We'll do that by setting its volume to 0. OK, we've muted the first input, and we can see the Dolby E data very clearly in the first a stereo pair. However, what we don't see is the decoded data in the upper eight channels. It turns out, well, we booted without the Dolby dongle. Let's reboot with that enabled. Okay, we rebooted with an enabled Dolby E dongle, and indeed we see the Dolby E data decompressing into the top eight channels. It's a sine wave which jumps every two seconds from channel to channel followed by two seconds of silence. It looks good, but we do see the Dolby E data still getting mixed into the bottom stereo pair. Okay, so now I'll just mute the bottom two channels of live input two, and this will not disturb the upper eight channels. So we set, and I'm doing this off screen. So now we see the Dolby E data gone from channel one on the bottom left. So now I'm going to get rid of it for channel 2, and there we go. So now it's all clean. That brings us to the end of this video tutorial. Thank you for listening.